Hello, welcome to, this is episode number four of the Rich Life Realization podcast. And we are so lucky today to have a wonderful guest, Steph Stewart. And I met her through nerd battles. I I don't, I haven't actually nerd battled you yet. And so we're going to have to put that on the schedule and make that a thing. Chester, he found another bone. (laughs) Chester, I'm sorry, Bubber. Normally you could chew all day long, but you cannot today. Okay. Chester, I'm sorry. Okay, everybody settle down. (laughs) (laughs) Easy to edit out. Edit out. Yeah. What? No, not in front of me. Lie down over here. Come here. Come here. Good. Down. Good boy. Down. All the way. Settle. Come on. Come on, Chester. You can do it. Okay, we'll start again. And three, two, one. Hi, welcome to Rich Life Realization Podcast. This is episode number four, and I have a very special guest on today. Her name is Steph Stewart, and she is someone that I met through nerd battling and we haven't actually met on the battlefield yet, but it it was a hobby that I used to do and that she still does. And and I'll go out and, and nerd battle every once in a while. Oh, we, we really connected on our love of coaching and self improvement. And she is just this, vibrant, creative, sunshiny, beautiful person. So thank you for being on today, Steph. Thanks, Rich. I'm really happy to be here. Um, It's already been a really fun journey of getting to know you uh, and especially getting to know you in this capacity because it is a shared passion. And um, (laughs) I've found that I don't get the same reaction from everyone when I start talking about coaching. So to get someone whose eyes light up instead of um, maybe, maybe being a little bit less interested is fantastic. Yeah. And, and like when we first met, we were like, oh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. I have to talk about all the things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, we had to like get all of the words out. It probably took us a good like hour or something like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, today we're going to be talking about coaching and whatever the heck else we want. Maybe nerd battling too. And uh, if you haven't already, I have re- check out my released class on creativity. It is called Reclaim Your Creative Self, and it's on Udemy. And I think you, you've you gotten to see the class, and you, she's given me some awesome feedback on it, too. I got to test drive the class. Yeah. I, I had the early access pass, which was amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually following through on one of the things that I, I mentioned that I was going to do, so I don't know if if I can say that, uh, about moving my sewing machine Mm. to an accessible area in my home, because I love to sew, especially, uh, the medieval type garb for our nerd battle activity. And I have found that, um, I'm not as likely to, um, feel that spark of inspiration I haven't been, this is like my experience. I haven't been as, as uh, feeling that spark of inspiration to pull out my sewing machine and start sewing as much um, because it's, we moved to a new home within the last year and all of my craft items ended up tucked away in a closet under the stairs. So I, I had told myself when I was going through the program, 
I'm going to move my sewing machine to a place where I can get to it and where I see it every day. And, you know, I'm, I'm engaging with it, even if it's a passive type of engagement where I'm just walking by it in my home. And um, I went and bought shelves that I'm putting together after this call to get it out of the closet. <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, <laughs> so yeah, you created an actionable result for me <laughs> to get that creative genius uh, really, I guess, uh, reducing the static, getting the creative genius online with what's happening in, in my surroundings and my environment. So I'm really excited about that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to sew something soon. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll check that out. We'll see some of your future projects. Yeah. Yeah. So and Steph was telling me about her her coaching. Uh she is in a I, I forgot what you called it. It was a liminal certain, space. <laughs> and it was it was a certain uh coaching school. And tell me more about that. Yes. So um yes, my uh so I am not a certified coach currently. Mm -hmm. but I'm interested in becoming a certified coach. I have been part of a group coaching program online that combines a monthly curriculum with, with um, coaching calls that are in a group format um, for the last three years. And the school that my coach was certified through is called the Life Coach School, which is, was founded by Brooke Castillo, I think around 2012 or so. And um, it uses the foundational uh, tool is called the model, the thought model, mm. uh, which is it's sort of a structure to consider thoughts, feelings, actions, circumstances in your life to tweak results and to really become aware of um, any default thinking that's happening for you and maybe start formulating intentional thinking so yeah that's that's what it is so I'm not currently certified but that's my next journey I think yeah that's your jam it sounds like you're really deeply into it and you've used that model in your life it's it's really had an impact on your life absolutely well absolutely I um I found coaching when I was uh, going through a divorce, actually. And so it was a really difficult situation that I was in. And um, I remember, so I was, it's funny because a lot of people will ask like, what's the difference between coaching and therapy? Mm -hmm. And um, I have an answer to that. But at the time I was going to therapy while I was sort of working through the feelings associated with the, the end of that relationship. And my therapist gave me the homework of find, or writing a five-year plan because she said that I had brought it up a couple of times. And I suppose that makes sense. You know, I can't remember exactly where my brain was at the moment, but I'm guessing because my path was changing due to the end of that relationship, I, I was maybe feeling some uncertainty about the future. And so she said, you know, I think you should just do this, right? Write a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And so 15 minutes before my appointment with my therapist, I'm in my car Googling how to write a five-year plan <laughs> and got lucky enough to stumble across mm -hmm. my current coach, her blog, and then just started consuming as much of her teaching as I could. And I'd go on long road trips and just listen to podcasts. So mm. yeah, yeah, that's how I found it. It's kind. Of, it's always kind of like serendipitous, a little bit that you're. You, you were procrast. Can I can I say that you were procrast? Because yeah. I do it too, and <laughs> an accurate representation. Yeah, of yeah, what yeah. Happened. So <laughs> you won't always get life changing things from procrastinating. I think we should probably mention that to our <laughs> listeners. Uh, in this case, sounds like it worked great for you. <laughs> the right teacher appeared at the moment that I needed it. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of how it feels. And and the the answer that I have maybe 
uh, come across with the difference between therapy and coaching. I'm curious to hear what what you think about this, but I mean, outside of the actual certifications, the schooling, Mm -hmm. um, of course, that's different, right? Because uh, coaching, I'm, I'm looking for a certification, whereas therapy to become a therapist, I would be getting a lot more schooling, yeah. um, like, um, structured formal education, but, uh, I've heard it described as therapy is typically past focused, mm-hmm. helping you come through something in your past where coaching is typically present and future focused. Also that, Um, therapy can help you to solve maybe an area of your life where you're experiencing some amount of dysfunction, but that coaching is about um, taking something that is functional already for you and, and making it something exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, but I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. Really expanding. So therapy has that it uh serves that role of helping especially when something is very painful or um I don't know past based Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's kind of funny because my wife is a therapist and (laughs) (laughs) she, she probably would would be like yeah, I'm guessing that she would, she would say, mm, that's, that's not quite it. You know, she would, she would be like, well, she would know. Oh, I plan with my clients too. And, and yeah, she, yeah. she, she's incredible. Uh, if you have like trauma, especially therapist is, is one of the most important things that you can do. I've had a therapist for years. And mm-hmm. if you're looking to what, well, like you said, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe accelerate things is that traditional coach. I don't know that I'm really that coach though. I think that, especially uh, based off of the three principles, I would more, you, you will achieve more and you, I think that that really you're connecting to your own wisdom and that is what will help you achieve more rather than a traditional coach who would, who would be that accountability coach, like do the hard goal setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Do, do the 20 push-ups, and then I would check in with you that you, or, or whether you've, you've gone and done this and achieved this. It's really more, even less about achieving. It's more about, about being. Being, being who you are or being connected with your, your self. Yeah. I, I, I don't see a difference in, in that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that that's been a part of one of the most fascinating things for me in getting to um, be coached by you and to learn more about the three principles and about the style of coaching um, that you have to offer um, because it is it is less um, what do I want to say it is more intuitive mm. I think there's a lot of intuition work that goes into being coached by you and, and, um, getting to access that part of, like you said, the inner wisdom Mm -hmm. is very much your intuition. Uh, the answers are in here already. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just need to be able to hear them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I also thought it was kind of cool that you mentioned like finding a teacher too. And because that came up for the for me this morning, I was reading something about what to look for in a teacher when you're looking for someone to mentor you. Like you, you had mentioned, like uh, asking when the student is ready. I think that's a quote. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And it it talked about looking for a teacher that. 
in a way lives what you want to embody. Mm -hmm. Look for a teacher that if if you're looking for a relationship coach or a relationship therapist, you would want somebody who is has a wonderful relationship. Right. And the same is true as you're looking for a teacher. You're looking for somebody that has that wonderful relationship with themselves. Someone who, and and that's hard to find, right? Because I think a lot of people can fake it. Mm -hmm. But I think we know, I think we know by feeling whether somebody's faking it or not. Mm -hmm. And whether they're a match for what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. A, a, um, a framework that I've heard before is the sage versus the Sherpa who are both, they're both models of teachers. Yeah. Sage has the traditional education. Um, they, they have all the credential, all of the, um, I guess they've really invested the time the energy, the resources in getting the formal education. So like a doctor is a great example of a sage because they've, they've learned everything that they possibly can in that rigorous pro set of programs, right. To become your doctor. And then there's a Sherpa and the Sherpa is the person who knows it all from experience. And what you just said about like a relationship coach, you could be both. Right. So there is the sage relationship coach who has gone through maybe a relationship coaching certification program or Mm -hmm. some other type of more formal education. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the Sherpa who has lived it, been in the shoes and managed to um, create the types of relationships Mm -hmm. that, like you said, that you you desire to have something similar yeah so it's kind of experience based the sherpa leading you up the mountain Hmm. yeah (laughs) got got the dog settled here okay (laughs) Hmm. i i and and it's it sounds like the the sage is kind of that that intellectual knowledge, and then the sherpa is that heart knowledge, the the inner wisdom kind of that we were talking about. Yeah, and it's I think that it's possible to frame that in a way that the sage can also be inner inner wisdom. I think it's really uh, it is that distinction of the head versus the heart maybe or even like the head versus the gut (laughs) Mm -hmm. um yeah I could see that there it uh yeah there's a sage and a sherpa kind of in everyone (laughs) yeah Hmm. yeah it also brings to mind that you you would want to find somebody that would really point you back to your own wisdom that wouldn't really say kind of like the, oh, look at me, or I only have the secret sauce, right? That here's this, the hidden secret sauce and, oh, you can peek at it, but, (laughs) (laughs) but that you wouldn't want to find somebody who who kind of keeps that hidden, who, who doles it out but that somebody that that says look for it within yourself mm-hmm. you are really the guru yeah well and especially when it comes to taking self-guided courses from a teacher that you've selected mm-hmm. i think that there is a lot to be said about the way that we each and in individually engage with maybe the course that we're taking um, because everyone is going to have a different experience of 
the same course. You know, you could have 10 students enrolled in one course and they're all going to have very different experiences of that course. And I think that that might, part of it might be based on that level of engagement. And the other part is probably based on that intuitive wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, so there, there might never be another person who takes your course and decides I'm going to pull my sewing machine out of my closet, <laughs> but they'll surely pull a different piece of insight out of anything that you're teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of the, the beauty of that um, overall expansion of maybe human consciousness as a whole, that we're all, even when we consume the same media, we're all creating new information and new wisdom out of it. Mm. If that makes sense. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that's cool. Life is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Life is cool. Life is really cool. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, Rich. <laughs> well, and and that's really the power of coaching is that in a lot of ways, you're kind of planting seeds that can grow into those insights or those understandings and that you can't give them to somebody else. Uh, there, there's kind of that difference between like consulting and coaching, where mm -hmm. consulting, you would tell people and you would say, okay, here are the steps one, two, and three. And, and yeah, that's that's totally great. There's definitely a place for that when you can do those steps in the real world, in the world of form, that will make a difference. And then there's there's coaching, which almost connects you to your, your inner wisdom, your, your own secret sauce, that maybe those steps one, two, and three is not for you. Maybe your inner wisdom would guide you to do it in a completely different way or not even do that particular thing. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree with that sentiment. I think it's funny because I, <laughs> I almost feel like, and I'm sure that this isn't true because I was at one point a teenager, just like everyone <laughs> else who's my age. Um, I feel like what coaching taught me was to trust myself. Mm. Being coached, being coached has taught me to trust my own brain on a level that I don't think, I don't really know that we're socialized to do that. Um, of course, that's a, that's a much deeper conversation about culture mm -hmm. um, and, and, education and um, that sort of thing. But for me personally, I really don't think that I trusted a lot of my own judgment until I started learning about coaching myself. Um, the foundational model in the, uh, the type of coaching that I described earlier is specifically meant to be used as a self-coaching model. So there's a lot of independent work that goes into that, uh, that practice. And um, yeah, it, it means that the rate at which I am finding my own secret sauce is kind of accelerated because I'm constantly asking myself questions, which again, I absolutely loved that um, suggestion in, in your class, the questions tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that can definitely. Be yeah, your brain is the most powerful computer there is. <laughs> and and it is kind of funny because I'm going to bring this point up. Not not in any way negating what <laughs> you just said about <laughs> it. I think that it's beautiful that you're you're trusting your your own reasoning and and maybe it's. I'm, I'm being semantic here, but there's a part of the three principles where there are times that we don't trust our brain, that we 
we won't really want to trust them. And, and we're going to get signals as to when to not trust our brain. And that's when we're feeling in a low mood. Mm, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because um, I don't know if this is how you feel. Um, but I think we touched on this at one point when you were coaching me that uh, the river of well-being, <laughs> you know, that there that that our default state is in touch with our internal geniuses. I think there are more than one. We've talked a lot about creative genius, but I think there's more than just one type of genius. Is that right? <laughs> hmm. Or it's all one genius, our own inner genius. That's that's probably where I would go. If, if we were to differentiate, it would probably come from a differentiation in our in our in our thinking. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that the the default state for us is um, that almost childlike joy and wonder. Mm-hmm. maybe and that when you are noticing that you are feeling feelings in your body or you're seeing thoughts in your mind that are not in line with that almost childlike sense of joy that maybe that's the moment to say hmm I don't <laughs> trust that Hold on. <laughs> what, Hold on right where now. is that coming from yeah yeah because we we're using the power of thought against ourselves in those moments. And thought is, is very powerful. It's this creative Plato, Mm -hmm. this, this, we can shape it into whatever we want to. And we're, we can use it against ourselves and that doesn't feel very good. Mm -hmm. And and you you know it because you're feeling crappy, you're in a bad mood, you're feeling pissed off or or sad or upset or depressed. And another way that we can know is if it's really complicated. Mm. Like, I have no idea. It feels jumbled. You feel overwhelmed. A lot of stress can come from from that space. <laughs> if it feels simple, we're we're connected with that that inner well being, that river that we talked about in our session. Mm-hmm. And the last way that you know, maybe there's more too. Um, but these and these are more guides too. We can see them as guides for ourselves. The last way that you would know is that if it feels super urgent, like I have to do this right now. Mm-hmm. Like if there's like a deadline, then that's different. But if it feels like like urgent, it has to be right this second. That might that's be another sign. To slow down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a difference between feeling urgency and knowing intellectually that there's an external deadline yeah yeah. and sometimes we know that there's an external deadline and still feel like we're waiting through pudding trying to get to the goal Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone else has experienced that in their sort of day job but I have (laughs) where they just knowledge of an external deadline doesn't necessarily equate to that feeling of urgency Mm -hmm. yeah but feeling urgently that I think for me that it, uh, it, it manifests especially as a problem that I think I need to solve that typically isn't actually a problem or it's not a thing that needs to be solved. And when that type of thing comes up, um, especially if it involves other people, that's where I find I feel the most Mm -hmm. urgent is I need to make sure they know I didn't mean that. I need to make sure that, um, make sure to apologize right away or get my point across so that they know. And there's really no need for that urgency in most of those situations. Mm -hmm. But that's maybe when I'm, 
I'm off the radio signal a little bit. Ooh. Yeah. You like that? I used your word. Maybe. I like that you, you especially talked about like other people in, because I think I used to be so much like that, that I would be like, worried and and scared that oh what do they think of me and Mm -hmm. and you can even imagine like these terrible things happening I don't know I we we can we can worry in our minds the interesting thing though is that that same process of the river that of well-being that that kind of washes away we trust that in time that will be brought back to that well-being, that inner. We know that that's going to happen for other people. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. If I can share an anecdote, this is one of my, this is one of my favorite moments from uh, growing up. So there was a time in my life where, so I was in college and I lived away from home. And I came home over a holiday once and there was a big glass globe style, I guess it was a maybe a flower vase with this beautiful stem sitting on the kitchen counter. Hmm. And it was full of tiny scraps of paper. And I was, so I'm visiting and one time I, I saw my mom walk over to the globe full of strips of paper and start massaging the paper while she was talking to me. So we're having this conversation and she's just mindlessly sort of massaging these scraps of paper. And I said, mom, I have to know, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm just massaging my brain. She had taken all of those strips of paper and written the things that she was worrying about on the paper and then folded them up and put them into the jar. And for her, that was her moment of letting go of the things she was worrying about. She was acknowledging that she was worried about it. And she just decided that as soon as she put it into the jar, it was out of her hands. And then every so often, I mean, she would massage her brain, right? But every so often, (laughs) Every so often she would dump the whole thing out and open the papers back up and take out all of the papers that were no longer a worry. Nothing, everything that had been answered, everything that had been resolved got removed from the globe. And then she would put, she would put the ones that were still on her mind back into the globe. And that, that was her process. And it was one of the most, um, I'll never forget that. It was one of the, it was, I would almost say that it was like a, what's the word of, uh, of formulative experience. <laughs> that's, right, the, that's the wrong word. You know what I mean? It was formative. Mm-hmm. That's the one. Mm-hmm. It was a formative experience for me um, to watch her handle the things that were upsetting her in a way that was so empowered Mm -hmm. i think wow yeah (laughs) yeah she would just massage her brain and then take out all the things that she didn't need to worry about anymore and i I love that that she she didn't tell you at all and so she was just randomly sitting there like oh yes Uh, oh i'm massaging my brain what you're like petting a cat <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was like it was like petting a cat like she was just scratching around the papers and I said mom you know I'm like 20 at this point I said mom what are you doing yeah hmm. yeah that's so cool that's so cool and, and, it, and it reminds me too that in in the principles there's not really any techniques except for the ones that you're guided to do. So it it sounds like 
she was guided to write on scraps of paper and throw it in and and you can try some of these things out and see you'll you'll know by your feeling mm -hmm. whether or not there's something that that is that might really work for you and they might be something that you can use for a little bit and then drop it's kind of like the the boat what well, i've had a lot of those where i've i've done this this uh, and this and 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 it's worked for me right yeah i've never adopted her practice myself mm -hmm. right but i think that the big takeaway for me in that scenario was to to really release the things that i'm worried about when I become aware that I am worrying. Um, I think Eckhart Tolle might have be, mm -hmm. uh, worry pretends to be necessary, I think, is maybe an Eckhart Tolle quote. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm incorrect on that, but um, to release the things that I find myself worrying about when I acknowledge that I am worrying, and then to later recognize just how temporary all of those worries really are truly temporary you know just like life there's there there aren't at least in my experience there aren't really worries that stay with us forever yeah they're mm -hmm. and that's because they're made of thought they're all made of the Plato and they go back to being Plato. And you, I like that you talked about kind of dropping them, dropping your worries. And some people listening might be like, well, well how do you do that? I, I need to take notes. And you do it every single day. Mm -hmm. It's like you just drop a thought and you move on. It's Indeed. it's not something that you're unskilled at. Sometimes it feels like we can't, like it, it keeps coming back. But mm -hmm. when we see that it's thought, we can just let it be there and then it, it will dissolve. Mm -hmm. And we can drop it and we'll have new thoughts. We want to make space. Uh, I, I did a video uh, on Instagram that had that was talking about juggling. And you have to empty your hand in order to catch the next ball. Mm -hmm. What I what I find is that once I become aware that I am thinking mm -hmm. a thought that is maybe not in my best interests. So a great example would be thinking a thought that's producing that feeling of worry about some, especially something external, uh, completely outside of my control. Why are we worrying about this? What I found is that when I start really questioning a thought like that, um, the next time it emerges for me, it's almost like hearing a wrong note in a song. Ooh. I, I have a harder time latching onto it once I've intentionally questioned it. And I imagine myself, it's a balloon, uh, like um, a, an uninflated balloon, just a little rubber piece. And I've poked a bunch of holes in it. And then I'm trying to inflate it and it won't inflate. It won't hold the air because I've already poked a bunch of holes in it. And that that practice has served me so much when it comes to um, guiding myself toward thoughts that produce a better feeling, especially. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the, like, the wrong note just like so resonates. Oh my God. Yeah. When I hear that thought again, because I will hear it again. Yeah. It's just, I'm playing the same song, but ooh, that didn't sound right. Oh, that's because I've looked at this thought before and I know that there are other things that I also believe are true. And I know that this thought doesn't really serve me. 
Hmm. Yeah. Being in tune. It, it reminds me a lot of there's um in the principles, there's a metaphor that is kind of replayed over and over there. And maybe there's, which one should I go with? Oh, let's go with the trains. Have I, did I talk to you about the trains when we coach? Great. No, okay. tell me. <laughs> trains, well, I like, I picked the trains because there's a silly pun. Um, train of thought. Uh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, and, and, and it's what we can do is we can let the trains pass by. Mm. And this is the kind of the, the interesting part we we this this talks about insight too and and thoughts and that when we're at the train station and we're not riding a train we can let them pass by mm -hmm. and sometimes we might realize that we're on the wrong train like you mm -hmm. said before i oh my gosh this is a thought I've had before. I don't really want to have it. I'm on the wrong train. You can get off the train. Go back to the train station. And our creative genius, our, our, our mind or consciousness will give us new thought. And sometimes those thoughts will be what we like to call insight mm. something that shifts our understanding mm -hmm. in an incredible way and this is this is kind of like the the coaching juju that when people have these insights that's where true transformation comes from. Mm -hmm. And when you're at the train station more and not riding all these kind of crazy really train? like the crazy, yes, yes, the crazy train. When you're not riding the crazy train, <laughs> <laughs> then you're you're gonna have more opportunity for those insights. And those insights will come to you. They're not on a schedule. You, they're not predictable. Mm -hmm. And if you're at the train station more, you can you can get them more often. You're where they're coming from, and and look to where they're coming from too. Look to mm -hmm. toward creative genius mind mm -hmm. consciousness. And you can kind of see the expansion of where they're going, mm -hmm. potentially, or feel it. Yes. For me, it's, for me, it's usually the feeling. Yes. I can I can assess a thought by the feeling that it brings up, typically. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, and um, in my in the coaching practice that I've been a part of, we call it trying on a thought. Hmm. which I, I love to read in my spare time. And that's what I'm doing when I read, especially reading nonfiction um, and especially reading nonfiction that is about something theoretical like coaching or um, philosophy. I'm trying on some other thoughts that are being offered to me by the author and I can tell by the way that I feel whether or not a certain thought resonates with me. Mm -hmm. And that's an example from reading external media, which is not exactly what we're talking about in coaching, because in coaching, they're the internal thoughts, mm -hmm. but something that a coach is assisting you with maybe seeing. For me, I have to say my big takeaway from you know, our last coaching session was the river of well-being and the image that will not come out of my head <laughs> I don't know if you are familiar with the film Spirited Away by Miyazaki 
Um, it's been a while, but I, I that was a great one. Scene where the main character is uh, preparing a bath for a, what everyone thinks is a, a dirty stink spirit. <laughs> and no one will prepare the bath except for the main character who is the lowest man on, on the pole and has no choice. And uh, she discovers that it's not really a stink spirit. It's a river spirit. And the river, the physical river has been polluted. And she pulls on a bike handle. And there's this like pop sound. And all of the garbage comes flying out. And, and what you're left with is this beautiful, clean river spirit who thanks her and gives her like a token of blessing. But when you said that to me, that was the immediate image that my, my, my mind has been replaying. And I don't know that it's even a direct metaphor, but I'm just imagining, pop, let all the trash fall out of the river. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So we'll sit with that one for a little bit. Wow. Yeah. It's it's interesting because for me, insights have been more in, in thoughts. And it sounds like this one was more of an image. And I'm I have that's kind of cool. Well, and one of my favorite things about about um in particular uh your class. Mm -hmm. the, cre uh, the creative genius class um can you give the name again the reclaim your creative self reclaim your creative self class you use such beautiful imagery in your descriptions of concepts that that has been something that I have been able to really latch onto I think I remember every imagery metaphor you gave in that class because those were some of the most impactful moments for me personally. And um, I think that might just be a part of how my brain works. And I'm sure that there, there might be other people out there who feel similarly that if you give me a wonderful image to hold on to or something that inspires my brain to remember an image, then I'll really remember it. Mm -hmm. mm. Most people do think in, in visual too. Mm -hmm. There are some people that do and some people more think in, in words and. Yeah, I, I think in a way, the way that I think of it is that if you consider us to be some type of a spiritual entity mm -hmm. that is in a human body, experiencing through our senses the world it makes sense that right now for us the the things that are the strongest for us are are those sensory devices because we're in a human body and that that might not always be the case depending on what you believe about that spiritual entity um but that a part of the experience of being human is having a human body and human sensory experiences, um, whatever those may be for each individual body. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something that I, that I want to point to too that the 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 image or the the thought the insight the words is is not the insight if that mm -hmm. makes sense kind of like the the finger pointing to the moon is not the moon mm -hmm. and and i don't know if you see that i i liked your if you if you kind of understand what we're talking about that's great you you're probably seeing in between if you're not that's okay too. Follow the feeling. See if it feels like, like you were saying, try this on like a coat mm -hmm. 
and and see if it just fits all snug and nice. And that that kind of leads back to the earlier um, mention of finding a teacher. Yeah. Because you'll feel it. Like you said, if you try on that, that concept or that thought, that metaphor that that teacher has presented to you, you'll feel whether it's a fit, mm-hmm. whether it, it has that resonance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's cool. This is cool work. Yeah. Life is, life is cool. Life is cool. <laughs> it's <is> amazing. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, I'll. It, it tends to be when I look up at the sky, I'll have that that thought. Like when I look up at the moon, or. I'll I'll be in in awe of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone uh, I read recently about um, the recommendation to say "wow" more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> like like wow like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to just to pause and take a moment take a long enough moment to really consider what it is to be living in uh, central heating in the winter, wearing clothing Mm. with abundant resources. Uh, You know, if that's the experience that you're having and if it is to say, wow, because um, none of that is a given. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that we live in an era when it's possible is pretty incredible. But also the sky is pretty incredible, like you said, stars, trees, tiny bugs. Wow. Wow. Look at that thing. Isn't it cool? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. It's like the 10th time I've said cool, but what an amazing creature. What an amazing leaf, really. Mm. Slowing down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to go back to the, the fishbowl and, and, <laughs> and how we, 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 can, we can latch on to those, those worries and those stresses and that blinds us to the wow yeah it making space making the juggling making space yeah Yeah. if your hand is full of worry it's hard to fit awe or gratitude Mm -hmm. happiness that natural joy that comes from the river. The The default. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How freaking cool is it? I just feel so lucky because I feel like there are people who go their entire lives and never catch, maybe catch like one or two glimpses of this. And they're like, wow, what was that? And it just kind of fades away and they go back. And and how freaking cool is it that we're not only catching glimpses of it, we're seeing it more and more. I, I was thinking about... I've had this thought that that's kind of brought me to tears lately that I'm going to be exploring the three principles, these ideas for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, is that the well goes deeper. It Mm -hmm. is 
infinite. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm in awe of that. I'm that, that thought brings me so much like excitement and joy and, and I don't even know it. Like I can't even describe, I can't, I can't even describe it. And the fact that we get to go on that journey with these other people <laughs> who have populated our environment and that we can kind of help each other expand mm -hmm. back and forth, like the back and forth types of conversations that we can have, whether with someone in person or um, when you are consuming some type of media, mm -hmm. that is still that person's thoughts that they're offering to you that can inspire your thoughts that you can offer to someone that can inspire their thoughts. And so it's not, it is, it is essentially that sort of solo journey, it seems, for each of us, um, because we are talking about inner wisdom. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of having a coach is that the coach, um, this is not my metaphor, I'm, I'm borrowing this, Please. Helps, you, helps you see what's on the outside of the bottle. So if you imagine like a soda bottle with a label on it, you can see through it, but you are inside of your own bottle and you're trying to read the label, but it's backwards. It's kind of hard to see. And the beauty of having a coach is that they can help you read what's on the outside of your bottle um, and help you come to those moments of maybe insight for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd say if, if if you want to do it with a coach, if you want to do it by consuming media, look for those those seeds. Mm -hmm. They're really all around us. And the the interesting thing is, and, and the principles talk about that it is either a mile away or a second away. It's it's really just a thought away. Mm -hmm. And when you see it for the first time, even for the second time or third time, or sometimes we lose it and then we just remind ourselves. When we see it, There's nothing more beautiful than our own inner wisdom, our own inner peace, mm -hmm. our own inner insight. I like to imagine that decision making is actually an instantaneous process. <laughs> and, yeah. and I mean... Sometimes you're making a big decision about something in your life, like changing a career or purchasing a property or um, relationships, like maybe marriage or something. Um, and, and it is true that you spend time leading up to those types of decisions in considering what, will ha what might happen. But the truth is that the moment that you decide, it, you decide. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's just what that, what that made me think of is, you know, the moment that you have the thought or the moment that you grasp it, the moment that you feel it, maybe, mm -hmm. <laughs> is it the feelings? When you really feel it, you feel it. Yeah. And there's, and it's, and then for me, the experience is that discordant note anytime I return to the old stomping ground of the old thought and I just can't, can't really hang there anymore yeah yeah 
there's there's a knowing and and a not knowing and it's okay to not know I used to be so in, indecisive all the time yeah. even for stupid little things. And there's, there's that knowing. And also the knowing that you talked about with, with how it feels and, and the notes, that discordant note, we have that inner knowing with, with what we're doing. And it's when you know not to trust yourself. <laughs> yep. Oh, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> I probably, whatever's going on up here, I might want to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it sounds like you you're in this beautiful journey and you want to help other people and if you like what Steph is saying and you liked our conversation reach out to Steph how can people reach you um right now I suppose I have my personal um personal Facebook and Instagram accounts, which I can give you for linking. Yes. Um, but at some point in the near future, I'll be setting up my own uh, practice type accounts. So maybe what we'll do is update the information when I have it. Perfect. Yeah. Mm. I know this is, this can be a lot of pressure. So uh, don't, don't feel, don't feel any pressure. Um, <laughs> I'll let you maybe encapsulate this. I like to let other people have the last word and then we'll leave it at that. And you can have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening to our wonderful listeners to Steph. She is, wow, she is phenomenal she has her own magic her own inner wisdom we've seen it so what what can we say that would encapsulate it for you i think um that what i can say that would encapsulate this experience for me both of being on the podcast today with you and coaching with you in the past and getting the opportunity to go through um, the Reclaim Your Creativity course um, would be that beautiful metaphor that we've talked about here of turning the radio dial mm -hmm. in order to get in line with the broadcasting radio station that your creative but maybe also just inner genius is operating on I think the message that I would want anyone to have is that the default is good <laughs> the default is joyful the default is abundant mm. and that it is completely within your power to turn the dial let go of the dial and allow it to turn right back to your inner genius station. Um, I think that that has been the most powerful impact of my work with you. And if I wanted to tell anyone what they should know about working with you, that's what I would tell them. That's, that's mm -hmm. the lesson that I would want them to hear. <laughs> Thank you so much like mm, that made me feel awesome so thank you for being on the podcast thank you thank you thank you welcome and, thank you for having me yeah and yeah have a wonderful night thank you you too mm -hmm. until next time this was rich life realization podcast episode number four 
we got to have the wonderful Steph Stewart. I'll leave it at that. Nothing more to say.